What's up guys, it's Shady here, and today we're here with our week 8 game of the UPBA. This week we're going up against Coach Dr. Slacking and his uh, Bowen Bovines, I believe. Uh, make sure you check him out. No, he's not the Bowen Bovines in this league, he's actually the Lake District Spirit. So, uh, that's a mistake on my part. Um, there's going to be no way out, as you can tell. Um, about halfway through, or not even halfway through, probably like 80% of the way through uh photoshop decided to crash on me and i was not gonna it didn't save anything uh it didn't back it up or anything so i now was not gonna spend another hour on the layout it takes me an hour to make the layouts uh, getting the screenshots and all that and it's really it's really a hassle and i was gonna go back and do that because um frankly i mean i still had to record this and it, this is the night before it's already getting pretty late and i was just not gonna worry about it so uh, sorry for no layout this week, but next time, or next week, there will be. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over our team, his team, all that. Of course, um, our team has remained the same. We are making no transactions. The deadline has hit, and so we are with the team that we have. We, of course, still have Zera Aura, Infernape, Tangrowth, Dawnfan, Mega Agron, Aromatis, Gastrodon, Golbat, Dustin War, Kiram, and Alakazam, with their Z users being Infernape and Golbat. Whereas he is packing um, a very, very bad team. Uh, like, he even openly said it. Um, he didn't get the team drafted for him. So one of his friends drafted it for him. Um, completely. Um, and he didn't know until after the draft had completed what his team was. Um, so he didn't get like a completely, you know, this amazing team that he could have gotten. He did get a, somewhat of a meme team. But um, in my eyes, I think Dr. Sl Dr. Slacking is a really good battler. I do his content. I watch it. I think he's really good. And um, although the beginning of the season was kind of um, rough for him, recently he's been on a little bit of a win streak. And so I'm definitely not going to underestimate the team he has. And plus he does have a couple threats to my team. Um, nonetheless, he has the Dugtrio, the Tapu Bulu, the Mega Audino, the Simiseer, the Meowstic Male, the Pukamuku, the Staraptor, the Ursaring, the Masquerine, Dragalge, and Fortress. With the Z-Users being Simiseer, Masquerine, and Dragalge. Um, so yeah, we'll quickly go over the team that we brought versus him. We have, of course, our Mega Aggron here. Uh, pretty physically defensive, has a little bit of, of attack investment, um, I think just to ensure that maybe it will uh, fire punch to a KO Fortress, that, I think that's it, uh, I might be incorrect about that, but it's a pretty physical set with Heavy Slam, Fire Punch, Taunt, and Stealth Rocks, Rocks really nice for his team, with thanks to, uh, such as the Staraptor, the Simi the Masquerade, and it forces him to rapid spin with the Fortress, Heavy Slam, he really didn't have a, he really doesn't have a switch into it, um, and then Fire Punch, of course, for the Fortress, Taunt, um, we should outspeed a Fortress, and if we can get the Taunt off, then we can stop it from setting up Hazard and all that. Um, and then, yeah, that's our Mega Aggron. We have our Kirim, pretty bulky, uh, 196 HP, uh, 100 Special Attack Modest, 212 Speed. Uh, with the leftovers, Ice Beam, Toxic Sub Roots, just meant to Toxic Solid Team. Um, I'm pretty sure it was meant for something in specific. I think it was the Mega Audino. I could just sub toxic it, um, as long as it didn't have Hail Bell, of course, and that'd be really nice. Um, Ice Beam with the only move we packed, um, which hits the team really well. Of course, it doesn't hit the Fortress, but anything else on his team does not appreciate the Ice Beam. Not even the Semi Seer really appreciates it too much. Uh, we have our Shed Shell Infernape, um, with Flare, Blitz, Gunk Shot, Earthquake, Mog Punch, just. Uh, physically offensive. Shed Shell in case he brought the Duck Trio, he did not. Flare Blades, obviously, for our main stab. Gunk Shot to that Mega Audino, the Earthquake to hit, like the Simi Seer and the Dragalge, and I think there's something else. Uh, no, just that. And then Mock Punch for priority. Uh, maybe on Duck Trio if he's already down at his Sash. Um, the Ursa Ring if he decided to bring it. Things like that. Um,. Next we have a specially defensive Gastrodon with the Rindo Berry, Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Toxic Recover, just meant to be specially defensive for his threats such as the Simi Seer. Uh, Simi Seer definitely something I did not underestimate when prepping. 
Um, I know the power that Simicu can have after using it in a league recently in PMU, so I'm definitely not going to underestimate it. Uh, it's also super deaf to maybe deal with the Masquerade and the Dragalge a bit more better. Uh, so yeah, we have our Zero Aura completely physically offensive once again with the Shed Shell. I definitely thought that the trio was going to come. He didn't end up bringing it, so we did kind of waste two item slots with the Shed Shell and both of our offensive mods. Uh, we could have maybe brought like Zine for an ape and like a life orb bluffed uh, life orb zero aura or an expert ballad or something like that that might have been nice but uh unfortunately we did not we have the plasma fist dual chop fire punch and fake out fake out to break the trio stash and just have some priority on his team plasma fist obviously for our, our main stab dual chop to hit the dragold and fire punch to hit the bulu um dual chop uh, and fire punch both to a KO Duck Trio, so that wasn't a big deal. Um, and then lastly, we have Fat Bat, physically defensive, meant to take on that Tapu Bulu with Brave Bird U turn Roost Defog. Uh, so yeah, that's the team we're cracking. He decided to bring the Star Raptor, the Tapu Bulu, the Fortress, the Masquerade, the Simiseer, and the Dragalge. Of course, Star Raptor, I thought that might be like a Reckless Scarf set, um, just to kind of, which would do a lot of damage to our team. Um, the Bulu, I'm not really too sure what to expect from it, um, but Gobash should be able to deal with whatever set he decides to bring. Fortress, of course, just a hazard stacking set. Luckily, we have our Golbat to get the Raise of the Rocks. We have um, Agar on a Taunt and just a bunch of stuff. Um, Masquerade, maybe, uh, I'm thinking it's going to be a Web Sash lead, maybe. A Simi Seer, I'm thinking it's going to be a Nasty Plot with, like, um, Fire Blast, Z, Solar Beam, or HP Grass and uh focus blast i think it's just going to be a nasty plot three attack set maybe with z move and dragald um i wasn't sure whether it'd be a specially defensive set or a, a completely offensive set wasn't too sure about that one uh, but yeah we're just gonna get right into this um it's been a few days since i've seen this battle uh even longer since i've played it so I'm going to need to get it a little bit refreshed. I didn't uh, rewatch it beforehand. Sorry. Uh, but like I said, it's pretty late the night before. Uh, I decided to lead off with the Mega Aggron because uh, in case he led Fortress, I could get the Taunt off and we'd be fine. He decided to lead off with the Star Raptor, which is fine with us since we're pretty physically defensive. We can eat it close combat and just get our... Um, I think we decide just to get up our rocks. Um, I think it's this thing. Uh, I may have just Heavy Slammed. We'll, we'll see here. Um, but as y'all see, he actually decides to go for the workout. That completely caught me off guard. However, it's really too not, not that big of a deal. Because, uh, even at plus one, I'm taking a close combat. It's only doing like 50%, I think. And we're fine. I actually clicked Fire Punch. Because Fire Punch was into Heavy Slam, killed this thing. And in case he went into the fortress, I could catch it. Um, so yeah. Here's gonna click Brave Bird, though, which also like confused me why you wouldn't you use quick close combat um at, like I, I don't even know why he went for the bulk up on a mega aggron i'm not sure why he did that just this whole beginning couple turns definitely confused me i, mean, I just decided to click the heavy slam and i do end up picking up the ko on to the star raptor so Raptor, which is one of his more viable mods on his team def uh went down really early and with little struggle so uh that was also that was looking really good for me. Here he decided to send out his semi seer out of side just to go out into my gastro down here as he does indeed set up the nasty plus so he is what I thought he would. And here I believe I double out into my Kyurem scouting for the Z solar beam or the HP grass. And so I'm going to go out into my Kyurem here as he does in fact click HP grass I believe. Um, I think. He might have. Yeah. He clicks grass not. Um. So we could have lived that, especially with the Rindo Berry, but it's fine. Here I decide, um, I mean there's a chance he might have Focus Blast here, but Kyurem really isn't too, too necessary in this matchup. So I do decide that I'm just gonna, uh, just scout for the Focus Blast and see, um, and just let my Kyurem go down. So he's gonna fire off the Focus Blast and we are not gonna lift the hit, which is fine by me. I don't, I didn't think I really needed the Kyurem too much. And that is now gonna allow me to get a free switch in, into my Zero Aura here. And I'm hoping that he'll see, like, he's at full. And so, uh, Plasma Fist never really kills a semi-seer from full. But, um, 
I'm hoping I can get the fake out off and then the, uh, the plasma fist. Or, the, yeah, it'll be in range of plasma fist, but he just decided to go straight into a Sapu Bulu here as I click fake out. And based on this damage, I can see that this is a very, very bulky Tapu Bulu. And you're actually going to see here that he's also leftovers. So this is very, very bulky Bulu meant to deal probably specifically with my Zero Aura. And I'm seeing that Fire Punch is only doing like 35% and I do not want to catch a Wood Hammer. So I decided to go into my dedicated switch in, which is my Zubat, not my Zubat, sorry, my Golbat, as he decided just to set up the Leech Seed. So this is a very, very defensive Bulu uh, set that he decided to bring. Here, I thought there's no way he stays in. I'm going to just click the U-turn to get some initiative as he does swap out here and go into his Dragolge. And so now I'm able to just get the U-turn out and uh, pretty much just go into whatever I want. I believe I decided to go into my Gastrodon. Um, just because Gastrodon is meant to deal with this thing anyways. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. And, um, he's going to, of course, get the Grassy Terrain Recovery. And I'm just going to take this chance to fire off the Ice Beam, I believe. I might have fired off an Earth Power, actually. Uh, I think I actually did fire off the Earth Power. I don't even think I have Ice Beam on the set. Uh, I do not have Earth Power Sludge Wave. So I do fire off the Earth Power. And I do a good amount. I can see that it definitely is specially defensive. Um, and here I'm just going to decide to go out into my Inferno Pier. I thought there's no way he clicks EQ. And even if he does, thanks to the grass to terrain, I should be able to eat it really well. And he decides here to go out into his... Or uh, just set up some spikes. Which is fine by me. I have Gobat in the back, which is able to get the defog off pretty freely against a number of his mons. Uh, Gobat just so bulky. So I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. Um, here I decided to click the EQ, I thought the only thing that he could really switch in is the Dragalge, so I am going to try to predict that. And that's exactly what he does, he goes out into a Dragalge here, I'm going to click the Earthquake, and as you're going to see here, it is going to do a good amount of damage, it's going to do about 70%. And here, he was just outside of Flare Blitz range, I believe, and I did not want to risk the EQ, or me not killing. So I do just decide to click the EQ, I thought Masquerade may camp come in. But, um, it does not, or I mean, it does. Um, I really wish I clicked Flare Blitz, but I, of course, I did not. Um, here I'm gonna actually swap out though into my. Um, I wanna say my Zero Aura. Uh, yeah, I go out into my Zero Aura. I thought the Air Slash would be cut incoming, if anything, or maybe even the webs. And so getting my Zero Aura in before the webs get up would be nice. And he's actually going to double out into his Fortress, I see predicted Gastrodon. And I'm just going to fire off the Fire Punch here, break this thing down extremely well. I'm going to get the Burn too. And um, he can set the rocks. Something I didn't know, I, I watched um, MV's GBA video from, I guess it would be the week before this one goes up. Um, I don't know what week it was. I think, I don't know who he was playing or what. Maybe it was a WBE video. I don't know, it was an MV video. And pretty much Um Some his opponent his opponent was running Custap Berry. And the Custap Berry popped the turn before it should have. Or the turn before like he would have used the turn. And so I thought that's how Custap Berry worked in this game. Um just Custap Berry pops the turn before. Um you use it and so it kind of got nerfed but obviously it didn't because custap berry popped the turn that he used the move if that makes sense i, I know it's kind of hard to explain so i could have easily caught an explosion there but luckily i didn't he just ended up setting up second layer spikes and he did go down um he did go into his bulu i'm of course gonna go into my goal bat he predicts that and goes out into his semi here so good double on his part of course i am gonna have to swap here i'm gonna go out into my gastrodon as he decides to quick the fire blast I believe I think he just straight up attacks yep that's exactly what he does and he is gonna miss unfortunately um, I, I mean that kind of sucks but it really doesn't end up making too much of a deal he's gonna cook the focus blast I assume predicting maybe the infernate to come in um, but I, I'm just gonna stay in myself and I'm gonna make a prediction and I'm gonna predict the type of Bulu to come in I'm gonna cook sludge wave but he does stay in um, unfortunately here, I really should have clicked Earth Power, even if the Bulu came in, they gave me a switch in into my Golbat, and I could try to roost up or something. Here, he's just going to fire off the Grass Knot. I, of course, am going to eat it pretty well. Um, 
considering it's a times four effective and it's in the grassy terrain. Here I'm just gonna fire off another sludge wave in case you had to go with the boo. I really wanted that boo boo weekend because it was giving my um it was giving my zero aura a lot of problems. And I am gonna snag the poison, which is very unfortunate, you'll see how it comes into play later in the game. Uh, just him getting whittled down by that poison a lot. Here I'm just gonna let my Gastron go down with two layers of spikes up and rocks. Gastron really isn't gonna have much of a chance to recover up on anything, so I thought uh, it, it was about time for me to sack the Gastron. Here um, I am gonna go into my Infernape, I believe. Uh, is that right? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go into my Zero Aura here. Um, I didn't want to risk my speed creeping being wrong with Infernape, um, so I did go out into my Zero Aura. And here he's just gonna go out into his um, Tapu Bulu. And oh, I don't know what I do here. I think I might have just fired off the Plasma Fist. Yeah, I did. Um, I really should have called the top of Bulu coming in, but I just really could not risk it. I thought maybe he would overpredict if anything, uh, because if I get into Golbat for free, then I get a free boost off, and I can live any hit from any of his mods and get the defog off. And uh, the hazards were really, really nice against my team, so I didn't. I thought he would try to make a play uh, predicting my Golbat, but no, he just goes safe into his Bulu. Um, here I'm just gonna swap out and go out into my Infernape. I this is a defensive set. I didn't think he'd carry any coverage for my Infernape. And, um, of course he isn't, but he is going to actually double out into his, uh, his, whatever this is called, his Semi-Seer. Um, and although earlier I didn't want to make the play to make, to see if my speed creeping was correct, I decided here, if anything, this would be the turn where I am going to try to see if I got the speed creep right. Actually, I don't think I do. I think I just click Mock Punch. Um, and he actually just swaps out into a Dragulge, which is uh, fine by me because after this mock punch, even with the grassy terrain uh, recovery, I am going to be putting it into Flare Blitz range. Uh, yeah, I just clicked mock punch, mock punch kill, and I didn't have to risk the speed tie. Had I clicked the Flare Blitz, uh, I mean, nothing really would have changed. The Dragulge would have died. Uh, recoiled wouldn't have really been too different. Uh, not much would have changed had I like just clicked Flare Blitz or something against the, the semi Uh But now got the Dragalge here to my Flare Blitz and he's just going to get the free switch in into his Masquerine here. And I thought by the way that he sent in Masquerine, maybe he was Scarf, but I'm like, what if he's Sash? Breaking the Sash would be extremely nice. Bringing it down to Sash, then he just dies to a fake out from my Zara Aura. Um... So I do just decide to click for it, but he does end up being scarfed, like um, like I thought he may have. And he's just going to pick up the KO on my Infernape with the Air Slash. Um, here I decided to go out into my Mega Aggron. And the reason I did that at first is because I thought, oh, I could beat this 1v1. Yeah, had I gone to Zero Aura, that bait in the Infernape. Or not the Infernape, the Tapu Bulu. And had I gone Golbat, I thought that bait in the semi seer which isn't as big of a deal. Um, but uh, I just decided to go Mega Aggro instead. Here I Heavy Slam, and I do a good amount of damage, but I decide that I want my rocks up. Because if I get my rocks up here, um, because I got the poison on the semi seer it dies after rocks and one uh, turn of poison damage. And so my go back can outstall that. I just roost once. As long as he's not Z move, we're good. Um, it beat, and then it beat the Masquerade and the Tapu Bulu. So go back and just win at this point. So I do decide. I set up my rocks. And here I'm just going to go into my go back here. And I am going to get the roost off. Um, as he clicks the air slash. And as you can see here, we're going to flinch. And because of that, we lose the game right here. I decided to bring Infiltrator this week because he did have the Mail Sick Mail, as I said. And um, had he brought it, it obviously would have been probably a screen set, and getting behind the screens would have been really, really nice. Had I brought Inner Focus, I won the game, I just reached it up, and I beat the Simis here 1v1. Uh, he told me a set he actually wasn't Z move, so Fire Blast only did like 50%, and I was uh, just gonna make sure, like Air Slash only did like 25%, so I just would have reached it up to full, and uh, Air Slash plus uh, Fire Blast wouldn't have killed, and then. Um, I just beat the Bulu 1v1. 
but unfortunately we are not going to pick up the KO, or I, we are going to get punched and we're going to go into a zero aura, pick up the KO on the, the, whatever it's called, the Masquerade, and we're just going to get the fire punch off and, uh, basically lose the game 2-0, I believe. Uh, it was, a, it was an unfortunate loss, um, uh, like I said, we won. There was another way we were talking about post game where I could have won, where I didn't have to risk a flinch. Um, we were talking about it after the game. Uh, we're pretty much kind of like. Um, where. So I'm trying to find it. We were talking about it. Uh, I was thinking I should have gone Zero Aura instead of Mega Agron. No, Zero Aura instead of Golbat. Um, after I set up rocks and let Mega Agron go down. But once again, that kind of just let the Bulu come in. But then, um, yeah, that was the play. That was the play. Because um, I would have gone in with the with the Masquerade like at 10%. Uh, Theoretically, I don't get flinched and I quick fire punch. I always quick fire punch there in case he wanted to boo. We just got off the most damage. Um, and let's just say he sacked off the masquerade. Then he goes on the top of Bulu. Uh, the top of Bulu. Uh, I would just keep looking fire punch over and over again. If he sends in Simi Seer because of rocks, it dies to fire punch. He couldn't do that. Um, otherwise, he'd just sack it and he just get right into Bulu. So I'd fire punch, get off like 35%, and then he'd horn leech me and kill. And that would ensure that I get the free switching and the glow bat, and I could just roost up from there and I could just win. So that was the play to win without risking an air slash punch. Although, technically, I still would have had to risk the air slash punch on the Zero Aura. Because, like I said, I probably would have clicked fake out over fire punch, or fire punch over fake out on the masquerade. Um. And had he gotten the flinch, that would have been terrible. But it just, uh, I, I, I made the play that I thought was right. It still ended up, would have ended up winning me the game. But unfortunately, we did get flinched. But anyways, that's okay. GG to Dr. Slotkin. We moved down to 4-4, four and four, I believe. Uh, going into week 9, we play Coach Zangoose and his Arizona Diamond Box. That will be up next Saturday. And um, on Monday... We have a new league uh, sort of thing to finally announce. And I'm very excited to show you all that. But anyways, I'm thinking so much for watching. Make sure to check out Dr. Slacking and all the PBA coaches. All the description will be in the description below. This has been Shady and I'm out.